Good evening, professor, friends, and TCC classmates. My name is Dylan Sullivan. I'm very appreciative of you all being here with me tonight. What defines a Renaissance man? You've heard the term all too often, and I'm here today to speak about a man who exemplifies what it means to be a Renaissance man. I am before you all today to talk about the life of Lewis Howard Latimer, a man born from nothing yet would stop at nothing to become a renowned inventor amongst any other accolades. Let us begin with the early years in Lewis Latimer's life. Born in Chelsea, Massachusetts on September 4th, 1848, Lewis's life began just six years removed from his parents' freedom from slavery. His parents, Rebecca and George Latimer, ran away from slavery in Virginia, destined to live on free soil in Massachusetts. However, George had to act as a plantation owner in order to avoid jail for being a runaway slave. George was eventually re recognized as a fugitive and was arrested. Later, he stood before a judge and was ruled that he still belonged to his Virginian owner. The selflessness of one man would buy George's freedom for $400. Lewis Latimer had attended grade school in Massachusetts, was an excellent student. In between school, he would work with his father at the barbershop. However, in 1857, Supreme Court ruled that a man could not be a free man, even though he had lived in a free state. Shortly after the ruling, Lewis' father had disappeared. Living with a single mother, Lewis falsified his age in order to join the U.S. Navy. However, short-lived, Lewis' military career taught him a lot about mechanical drawing. Following the Civil War, Lewis found work in Boston at Crosby and Good Patent Law Firm. <clears throat> This law firm worked specifically in helping investors protect their parents. It is here where Lewis Latimer met Alexander Graham Bell and where his destiny would be sealed. Alexander Graham Bell tasked Lewis with the mechanical drawings of the world's first telephone. And it was because of Lewis' speed and efficiency that they were able to be first in production and to win the patenting race. Later on, in 1884, he was invited to work alongside Thomas Edison, who had invented the first source of light using electricity. Lewis again found success being a patent investigator and helped the creation of the light bulb. All the while, Lewis published books, poems, painted, and wrote plays. He took pride in each aspect of his life, and the motivation spoke bounds about his character. From beginning to end, Lewis Latimer is an inspiration to us all. From a very humbling upbringing, to working alongside some of the greatest minds the world has ever known. Without further ado, it is my honor and privilege to present to you Mr. Lewis Latimer.